Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Lazy Desk Academy. Welcome to Pico 8 Hero. Welcome to our tutorial on where we are going to be doing and still doing, we're doing it so well, a uh, roguelike. And so we can see we have our little duder, he walks around and there's some enemies that want to be killing us. But it's kind of weird, we already talked about, it's kind of, I don't like how the enemies always want to kill us. I want them to be sometimes a bit chill and, and so, you know, so I can like trigger the enemies and, and then they will attack me and not like they always being um, chasing me and stuff like that. And stuff like that. <laughs> Gosh, I hate it. Um, so yeah, so today we are going to be to, um, looking into line of sight detection. How are we are going to make it so that the mobs will be looking, will be only activated when once they saw me and usually they just you know stay put we are going to um add a, we're going to apply a very well known type of algorithm and that's going to be a line drawing algorithm let me let me there's a wiki page for this look at this just google line drawing org algorithm and you will get like a whole wiki page of of the issue here and you can see kind of like what the problem is you have like a line um, like a beginning and an end and what you want to be doing is you kind of want to check like all of the squares that this line is going through but you want to like, kind of like go check it like this kind of square pattern that's our goal here we want to be checking this, this these square patterns and so basically what our line algorithm will do is we'll, it will go through all of these lines all of the dots between two lines and if any of those dots um, is uh, not walkable or at least if it contains a tile not if it contains uh, an enemy if it contains a tile then it will return false it will say like nope we're not getting through here like this is not visible but if each of those tiles is free if, if it's walkable then it will return true like okay there's a line of sight between those two dots and that will allow us to kind of like do other, other things there we're going to use this function for a lot of things one important thing we're going to use it for is obviously uh, the AI, but also later on we also want to be maybe adding a system where um, there is like a fog of war happening, where you kind of like don't see the lag burns at the beginning, but you slowly uncover it. And obviously that's like a very good function for that kind of uh, that kind of uh, th stuff. And the cool thing is like there's like a little naive function in here if you if you I'm covering up. There's like a naive um, algorithm method here that um, that you can use to kind of create like this tear pattern, and that's exactly the kind of function that we're going to apply here. There is no no um, uh, mystery to it. I'm actually, whew, I actually I have to admit I went through this algorithm one once and kind of like understood what's happening, and I never looked at it again. <laughs> It's 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 a bit of a mathy algorithm, and you don't really have to understand exactly what it does uh, if you understand, you know, how to use it. And that's something that we're gonna do here. We're not gonna actually like take this algorithm apart. I don't think it's necessary. I think it's more important to take algorithms like you know, like a pathfinding algorithm. That I think is important to understand, or like a level generation, because these things are things that you're gonna be actually tweaking. This is not the type of algorithm that you won't be messing around with. It's kind of like a very simple thing. Um, not sure if we're going to put it as a tool. I think we're going to put it in gameplay this time around. The reason for this being is this algorithm will actually hook into um, it will hook into gameplay elements. It will. It's not a standalone kind of thing that you can just copy from from one project to another. Let me copy this real quick. I'm going to paste it. I'm going to walk through this a little bit so we kind of like can wrap our head around it. I'm going to put it down here. Bam. It's called LLS, line of sight, except X1, X, X1, X, uh, Y1, X2, Y2. So kind of like source, destination kind of situation. Um, there is a bunch of, of local variables we're defining. There is a first variable that is usually true. So that kind of checks if, you know, if this is the first tile we're, we're, we're checking. And there is SX and SY, DX and DY. These are kind of like used for the actual algorithm. Something I do immediately is like when I'm checked distance at the beginning, <laughs> that's actually using this fun function. And if that distance is one, then we don't have to actually go through this algorithm. We can just in re return true immediately. And the reason for why I'm doing this is actually just something I custom added later on that, that wasn't part of the original algorithm when I copied it from somewhere somebody else. Um, the reason why we're doing this is 
Um, we there is going to be situations where we are on tiles that can like cover a line of sight. That's going to be like you know like um, foreign tile. That's kind of like you can walk over it, but it covers line of sight. And if you're standing on those tile, or or on any standing on those tiles, you you would have the situation where um, just because they are they are on this tile, they're basically invisible. You cannot actually uh, establish line of sight to them because they are standing on this tile. Um, so I want to establish like a, as a general rule, if you're next to somebody, it doesn't really matter what kind of tile they're standing on, you will see them. Like you maybe hear them or you feel their breathing or something like this. Like if the, something like this, <laughs> if, uh, if you're close to some, some other um, element, you absolutely have line of sight to something that's near next to you. Just like a general rule. And these are part of the original algorithm. These are kind of like establishing, you know, um, which, uh, what is the distance um, between, um, yeah, if, if, if the destination is left or right from the, from the, from the source. It's kind of like establishing some, some variables that are necessary for this is the actual algorithm that is actually going through all of the stuff. Now, um, it loops until, it kind of like moves one of the, Values. Uh, I think it moves. Yeah, it moves x1 uh, through through kind of like the world and ch always checks at x1 if you know this is walkable or not. If it's walkable, it's using the is walkable function. Um, and once uh, x1 arrived x2 and y1 ar arrived at y2, you kind of like went through the, the path. So it's kind of like always taking x1 and y1 and wandering along the path from the source to this destination using like this kind of like step pattern. That's what it does. And it's using like this error and uh, I'm, I'm let me, please don't, don't, don't force me to go through this. It's, you don't actually have to understand it. It's fine. It's just like looping through until x1 and y1 reaches x2 and y2. Uh, this is a little hack I added here. It's like, um, it's, uh, it doesn't check because this is the statement that I kind of checks if a tile is walkable or not. And as soon as it finds a not wa walkable tile, and it uses this new mode here that we're gonna establish called site. As soon as it establishes one of the tiles as not walkable, it will immediately um, return false. Entire function will immediately return false because you don't have to check like the entire line. You just have to find one tile that obstructs the line of sight. And that kind of like already um, seals the deal for you, right? Um, but it won't actually do that. But it won't do that if this is the first tile. It won't do that if it's the first tile. Right? Because again, um, this is, I don't want to check the tile that I'm starting at. And I don't want to be ending the tile that I'm ending at. These two tiles um, are kind of like extempt from the line of sight. We're just checking the tiles in between the first and last one. And technically, I could probably just remove this one, but I just like this. This speeds things up a little bit. We we, go, we can mark this as as we could maybe remove this to speed uh, to save some tokens. Okay, so this is basically it. This is kind of like the, the entire function. I'm going to use this entire function later on. Something we have, maybe I want to check is this um, site mode for is walkable function. So we remember this is walkable function mm, and kind of checks if a tile is walkable or not. And we kind of said that maybe depending on how are we going to check if something is walkable, um, we're going to set it to different modes to search for. For example, we have this special mob, uh, mode called check mobs and that actually makes sure that it takes into consideration if um, there is actually a monster or the player standing on a given tile. And if there's a monster there, it will actually return false as not walkable. This is something that might be good for like, um, um, uh, for we actually use it for um, pathfinding. So the monsters are not not consider like are considering other monsters are as, as as obstacles and not actually go there. Later on, we're gonna actually maybe tweak it a little bit. Um, but now we uh, have also like the site mode. Now the, the way we set it up right now, it's kind of a bit of a hack, but the way we set it up right now is uh, there's just this check mob mode and 
the default mode and the default mode is just not the check mode <laughs> check mob mode and we don't really have that many complicated systems in yet right now so we can ignore it but i will put in a reminder that site is a mode that exists in our game and later on we maybe start piling up some modes and then maybe we later on when we get more complicated tile sets here that actually do different things for example something that is walkable that you can step on but that will cover a line of sight like a you know like a shrub or I had like a fern tile that was actually really cool. So, um, and for these kinds of things, sight will be different from the normal mode where it's just about walkability. Um, I just put it down here as a reminder, but right now it won't actually make a difference. Okay. So, I'm nervous. As always, like once I put some code in, in there somewhere, it's like, uh, 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 does this actually even work? Um, so maybe it might be worthwhile to kind of like see if um, kind of test it a little bit. So maybe let, let's 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 actually test it to a to a monster. We're gonna use a we're gonna remove those monsters in this in this guy here, and we're gonna put a monster down here. And, oops, okay. And in our UI, here in the, in the do, I, uh, do AI function, we're gonna actually um, just do like a test for of the line of sight. So we're gonna go, uh, if the mob is, is, is not a player, we're gonna go um, debug, debug, <laughs> debug, uh, one equals a loss line of sight m dot x m dot y uh, p mob dot x p mob dot y like so and i actually also won't be i'm going to turn off the walking he's not going to be walking you can see he doesn't see me now and if I step out he actually sees me now and then he here he doesn't see me now so we have a correct calculation of line of sight well I, we hope that it's correct <laughs> it is correct because we copied from there my other program but that's that's how it works yes you maybe uh, add maybe some more obstacles to see kind of like if um, some more complicated situations here let's see if that works um, so let's see for example if we're we add like these little little do blocks here so we can maybe like weave in and out behind behind those obstacles yeah so we see here he's kind of like hidden and you can see because of the step effect that we're talking about sometimes you know if you're at a corner he will see you sometimes he won't see you um, that's because again of this kind of like step function the step function is a bit unpredictable depending on what kind of angle the, you know you're, you're measuring at you you will get a step so in this case I think the, the step function kind of like goes through um, through this block here, so that's why he doesn't see me here, and here he sees me. But you know, there is always like you know some kind of blind spot that I can hide hide that. I, it's a bit unpredictable, so it might be worthwhile to later on to maybe go in there and maybe add some like extra UI elements that kind of like make you uh, really understand and kind of like may anticipate better where a mob can't and can't see you. But I'm happy with it. Okay. It's time. It's time to set up the actual um, AI function, our actual AI program. Let me explain you what I mean with that. Whoop! Here we are. <laughs> okay. So uh, let me see if I, this paint program is kind of weird to use. So uh, we are going to create a state machine, a very simple state machine. The, the mobs will have kind of like different, different tasks. I, I call them tasks, different things that they're supposed to be doing, different activities. Usually this activity will be activity, oh, this, this task will be, I'm gonna make it a small box here. And I'm gonna write some text in here. This will be wait. Let's make it real big. So usually we are in this paid uh, wait um, uh, mode, and in that wait mode will basically look for player. Now don't look for player. 
uh, stand, stay in place, stay in place, and um, wait until you see player. This is the wait mode. That's going to be the simple mode. That's going to be very easy to program. And then there's going to be a second mode that's going to be attack. That's going to be um, set. Um, each monster will have a target. We'll have a like tiers where I want this is the place that I'm attacking. And usually that um, that target is going to be um, where the player is. So set target. Now, if the monster is not seeing the player, uh, they will still try to attack um, the last target that they had. So the monster will pursue the player uh, when they see the player. And then when they lose sight of the player, when they no longer see the player, they will still continue moving in that, that direction and, and to the last spot where they saw the player. So continue moving to the target or move, or move to the target. Then attack if possible. We kind of already have that. You kind of also already have the move to the target, except we're moving always to the player. But now we're going to have like our own special little AI target. And then if a target, if we actually uh, enter the, the tile that we last saw our player at, if target, and in this case, um, we are going to return to the wait function. So here, uh, wait, here, let me put like a little big thing. So if I see the player, I'm gonna over, go over to the attack function. I'm gonna get triggered uh, or like, um, how do you call it? Aggro, and this is the aggro. This is aggro. If you see the player, you set a target on that spot and try to move to that spot. And if I'm at a target, if I arrive at the target, and there was no, like, no attacking opportunity or anything, then we lose track of our player. And then we go back to the wait function. A two state kind of machine where the attack is kind of like a more complicated machine. So if I'm at a target and there's no player, I'm gonna like stay at the target and just wait there. We could like think about more complicated movement. Maybe, you know, if I'm at a target, I will um, return to my initial position or something like that, something like that. Um, or maybe some mobs won't actually attack the player instead of trying to do like some kind of range uh, attacks. Um, or maybe some mobs will start retreating once their health is down. There's there's more complicated systems that you can come up with, but I think this for our very first stuff, this is actually really smart behavior, not, not smart behavior, but it actually will feel as if the mobs are smart if they're actually trying to outsmart us, especially because they're trying to find us. And with some like visual, extra visual cues, I think this looks really cute and fun. You will see what I mean. Okay, so um, this means that we kind of have to do a little bit more stuff. By the way, I just noticed something. All this list here, all of the things that we kind of have to do with our players, we actually don't need some of these things. I think you don't need socks and soy. I don't think you need them because they are set when you actually start moving a player. So let's, let me try this. Oh, let me actually start moving the player. Yeah. See? Um, and also, I think we might actually not even need the... We need the Ani, definitely, but we don't need the Moth. Yeah. Okay, but we need some other things here. So this is going to be about AI. So we need a target location and target a target X and target Y. Um, do we need it though? We might not need it. We might we might be able to set it set them for the first time. Yeah, let's try that. Huh. 
So we need t, Tx and Ty for the targets, um, but we do need definitely something that is called kind of like um, task, that the current task that they're performing, like the mode that they're currently in. I'm gonna call it wait. We could actually um, use, a, use a reference to a function at this point, not wait, just wait. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Okay, let's do something like this function AI underscore wait mob. So this is not a player mob. I'm gonna go uh, m, m dot task. It will just trigger the task of what, whatever the mob was doing. Um, and, and the task is, is going to be wait, M -A -A -I wait. So we're saving the actual function inside the task property. And here, so the wait function here is will do the line of sight check against the, <coughs> against the player. So we're going to go if loss, we already did that here, so we can just copy this out. So if loss between between the things is okay, it's like if there is a line of sight, then and at this point we are going to <clears throat> here we're going to aggro the player aggro. So we're going to go um, m dot task equals ai attack. I'm going to call it attack because uh, because oh no 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 and this is going to be the ai function attack. AI uh, tag, like so. I'm gonna fill that attack in a second here. I just want to make sure that all this stuff here is, is okay here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set the mov to nil at the beginning. I'm gonna remove this debug. I'm gonna actually keep this debugging around, or maybe yeah, let's keep it as a bugging around. That's fine. And then the, all this stuff. I'm gonna copy out, yeah, and I'm gonna just dump into our attack function. This is a very the attack function, uh, the attack behavior is gonna be very similar to our to our current behavior of the monster. So now the monster will get actually get um, will get activated by the line of sight. Like so. Let's see if this works. So there is no line of sight now. Now there is line of sight and now the monster is moving towards us. Now there's something I don't like about this where it's like, it's kind of bad that we don't, don't really see if the monster actually did something. It's like you don't see, there's like the monsters are suddenly starts moving. So you don't, aren't really, never, you are never really sure if the monster saw you or not. And I think there's a really cool trick that we can use here to, to make that more clear. And I, li I like that trick very much. It's, it's a very fun trick. And we're gonna use this floater that we had. You remember the floaters? Uh, when we had to do the hit, hit, hit mob thing, where, oops, when we actually like show the, the amount of damage that we do, we can use the same floater to add some additional information about what the mob is doing. And so in this case, where we get the aggro, uh, we can show the floater that goes like exclamation point. And M, M, and this time we're gonna actually use a 10 color because you know the mob is yellow, so it makes sense that the exclamation point will be yellow as well. It's a bit too far to the left, so we're gonna add something, some pixels. So let's go four. Uh, a bit too much, let's go two. So now you see the mob is actually, you see when the mob sees you. They, they look a lot more um, human. It looks, it looks, it looks uh, a lot more and uh, more interesting. Good. Okay, so there's a big important thing that we're not doing here, uh, where it's like uh, the mob is following us now correctly, but I want us also now have a situation where the mob is loses um, loses track of our of, of us. So let's let's program in that. So first, I want to set target x and target y. That's going to be like the target position at which the, the mob wants to go. 
and um, that's going to be like when they spot us they will do that with our current position they will kind of set their their goal um, to the position that we are currently at and then here where we're attacking so this is like okay if we are nearby we're going to attack definitely and if we're not nearby then we're going to try to move in our direction and now we're no longer moving to the player that's not something something doing we're doing to be not moving to the player we're moving to the here this this nation it's not going to be between the player but between the mob target between the target of the mob not not to actually to our player um also Here also we're gonna do a line of sight check. And we, if we see the player, then we update our target. So if the player is moving away, the mob will actually you know, track the player and make sure that, that they kind of keep track of them. Like that. Still, you know, the same function here. We just like checking if there's a line of sight between the mob and the player, and if there is one, we're setting the target to that position. Then we check if um, if there is if there's a if we can figure out a path, and if we can figure out the path, then we move. Um, there is one problem. Okay, so here we want to check if we are actually currently at the position. If we once we arrive at the position, we we'll kind of want to de de aggro the monster. That's something that we already talked about. So we're gonna go if m dot x <coughs> equals m m dot t x and m dot y equals m dot t y, then else and this all stuff. So if we are at the position and we don't see anything and we haven't been triggered or anything, we haven't been aggroed, and I'm not, I shouldn't use trigger, that's not a good idea, um, then it's kind of like a, the, the reverse of what happen, happened here where we, where we, um, where we de-aggro. So we're gonna set our mob to wait again and to communicate to the player that that they the AI has lost track of our player, we're gonna add a little floaty where it's like, I don't know where you are. So you see the mob sees me. I'm gonna try to, to flee, and now they no longer like see me. And they they are they're getting confused by it. So look take a look at what happened here. So here the mob sees me at this at this corner of this wall, right? He sees me that I just just looked around the corner, so it will move in that direction, but it doesn't actually have any line of sight. It's weird that they still don't have a line of sight. They should have line of sight now. Ah, but now it's like they didn't have the line of sight at the beginning of their movement. So if I stay here, they will have line of sight. So and they will continue following me, but. You can actually you can make it maybe even more clear. I will open the door first, then the mob sees me, I will disappear. And now the mob no longer sees me because I went through that door. And so it doesn't have line of sight. Uh, it went to the last position where they saw me and that was like behind this corner and didn't see me. And so um, and so it, it kind of like, okay, I guess I, guess I lost them <laughs> and then it, 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 uh, it goes away. Uh, one thing you could do here um, to kind of like f mm, make sure that the that this situation that we had here I never noticed this by the way this is like the first time I see this 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 situation kind of looks odd because it, it seems like the mob sees me right it's kind of like odd that they, after they moved um, they're not reacquiring the position so something we can do here is we can move the player first uh, we can acquire the line of sight move the player and after we move them we acquire the line of sight again. Because maybe after we moved, we're gonna see more. We could do something like this. So 
So now I guess it won't work. Yeah, because now they actually saw me going into that door. So this makes the AI a little bit smarter. I'm not sure if I want that though. I'm not sure if, that, if that, that's actually cool. I kind of like the AI to be a bit, a, a bit dumb. So I'm gonna remove this and if we feel that this is something that, that, um, that breaks the gameplay, we're gonna, we're gonna bring this back. I'm gonna put an info for me later on. Re um, to do re acquire target question mark. Not sure if we're gonna do this it, because this you know this whole thing costs a lot of tokens. What we might do obviously is kind of put this in its own function, but kind of we kind of do that here. Uh, no, here. So I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, anyway, so we programmed our very first, a very beautiful a little AI that kind of behaves in this kind of like very cute fashion. It kind of like we can, it gets lost and it's, it gets confused. That seems like really cool. Um, so the next step is going to be actually bump up the pathfinding function so that the AI cannot actually be get stumped by um, by us walking behind a wall and, and, and tricking them like this in this way. So that's something that comes up in the next episode. Uh, as always, uh, at the beginning, down in doobly-doo, there is a code for the end of the episode for you to check out if you want to copy like this, for example, this this line of sight function. And you should visit the Discord, uh, the Discord, <laughs> where we hang out and discussing the prototype. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.